press the live button. Tell me when you're ready. Later on, 
His self-same spirit manifests itself in a physical body and walked the earth plate as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading a preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, this book we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build an exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a fork round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in this book to prove that everything in the universe operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten names of the school are as follows. One is to help you find him and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without speaking of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers laid in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. The seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the devil, the serpent, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. The night is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten is to inherit the eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchman is peace. Our slogan speak the truth. Uh, today we have our scripture lesson of Colossians, the second chapter. Our scripture reader will be Dr. Irene Ramirez and Annette Ramirez. And we have a prayer by Dr. Irene Ramirez. Sorry for starting off today, we have problems. Good morning, class. Uh, we have to thank y'all. We are having a reading us here today so we can learn more about this purpose, pattern, and plan. And we do need this in this time. We need to understand him. And the way we can understand it is through his son, Yahshua Messiah. So let's all say hallelujah. Alrighty, uh, we kind of skipped the music this morning because of uh, uh, certain events that going on. But uh, we have our scripture lesson read by Dr. Nanette Ramirez. by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association. I'll be 
reading Colossians, the second chapter. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and until all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of Yahweh, the Father and the Messiah, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in the Messiah. As ye have therefore received Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest all any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after the Messiah. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the super, supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. By the circumcision of the Messiah, Bury with him by immersion wherein also ye are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of Yahweh, who hath raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant, triumphantly, over them in it. Let no one condemn you regarding sacrificial meal and drink, Offering made on the holy days, new moon, and Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is the Messiah. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered, and knit together increaseth with the increase of Elohim. Wherefore, if ye be dead with the Messiah from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world, world are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all perished with the using. After the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and hum humility and neglecting of the body, which have no value except to the satisfying of the flesh. I have read Colossians, the, sixth cha I mean, the second chapter. Let us all say, Helen. All right, let's begin. Well, I apologize for the late uh, beginning. You know, after watching all these classes uh, over the weekend and stuff, you know, I was really, uh, really, uh, I'd say, uh, uh, you know, uplifted. Okay, 
And I expect you to come to class. I was working on some cables uh, for uh, the audio equipment and stuff. So this morning, get up, jump in our van, didn't want to start. So then, okay, I got a backup. Uh, we started loading this, everything up in a pickup, bring it down here. So we started loading, everything comes up to check the classroom, and they found out that they moved us down to the second floor. So we got to come rearrange everything up here, get set up with our cameras and stuff, and we couldn't get connected to YouTube. And then uh, I couldn't get connected to uh, our web page, I think because Will was using it. Okay, but it, it kind of messed up the phone, so I, I, that's why I'm recording on my page. But still, it's on site. Okay. Anyway, let's get on with the class. And I'm using this mic because the cables I'm working on, I forgot them in the van. Okay. Right. So Colossians. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of uh, the course over there in uh, in uh, North Carolina, Charlotte. Somebody brought up about these cardinal ordinances, okay? Uh, this right here. Okay, and I start thinking about it, you know, and, and listening and everything, but I said, well, you know, I might give a lecture on that, you know, come Sunday, you know. And so, let's begin with this. Paul is speaking about these things that were under the law. Okay, he's speaking to the Jews back then. Okay, after the day of Pentecost. Now, you know, it speaks about circumcision and the corners, how they were nailed to the cross. And the Messiah is the substance. Okay. Now, before we can speak about the uh, we talked about the second covenant. Somebody was talking about a testament, okay, the so-called New Testament, that's the leaflet in the Bible that everybody has, which was proven that that is not the New Testament, okay, because the New Testament is not going to be written in the scroll here. You get all these ordinances, these laws, Ten Commandment laws, sacrifice, all that. The letter of the law that was given to the Jews back here with Moses. Okay? So when Yahweh spoke down that. So if you're going to speak about a second covenant, a new covenant, you have to know something about the first covenant or the old covenant. Okay? What is a covenant? Well, we could get uh, basic and say, well, it's a contract. Okay? Uh, you buy things you know, on, a, on a payment plan. Once you reach that goal, and you pay for a tool, well, you get the credentials for that thing. You buy a car, you get the fee slip. Okay, you have paid off your uh, your debt. Okay. Now, uh, there's a scripture and it talks about uh, 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 that. But after man or death did is that that. Uh, Paul has to go 
and get this matter straightened out. 15th chapter of Acts. Let's get that. Okay. It's called a controversy. Is there a verse that you want? Huh? Is there a verse that you want? Let's start from the beginning. Fifteenth chapter Acts. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye except ye be circumcised after the manner of the of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Okay, now they're talking they're saying the stuff after the Pentecost. Okay? And they're teaching these, these Gentiles that you have to be circumcised after the, the manner of the law that was given to Moses to read. When therefore Saul and Barnabas had no small dissension dis, dis, and disputation with them, they, they disputed about this. Read. They determined that Saul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Okay, so they decided to go and see this uh, apostle about this question, read. And being brought on their way by the congregation, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the nations. The uh, conversion of the of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the congregation and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that Yahweh had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. Certain of the sect of the Pharisees. Okay, read. Which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them. So they believed that uh, they had to circumcise uh, these uh, Gentiles. Okay, now, first of all, the apostles had to go down there. Do we know what an apostle is? First of all, apostle is an eyewitness. Okay, Yahshua chose 12 disciples. There's a, uh, another verse that says I've chosen the one who uses the devil. Okay? Anyway, so these disciples, Yahshua chose, he had to pick them himself. You can read from Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, John, I believe, that he went by and took, he was picking out his uh, disciples and says, Follow me, follow me, Matthew, James, you know, John. So they followed, they dropped whatever they were doing, and they followed Yahshua. And Yahshua went into his ministry at the age of 30. Okay. And there were, he said to the, over there, and there's another verse that says that uh, there were his witnesses. He shall be my witnesses. Okay. Um, now, later on, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, Okay. They became his apostles on the day of Pentecost. Okay. They received the Holy Spirit and they were able to testify of the things that they saw and heard the Messiah do. Okay. First of all, he goes to John to be immersed with John okay, in the river Jordan. They witnessed that. Okay. Why? Because it said he came to fulfill. That's another thing that people don't know about the Messiah. Okay? Who they call Jesus Christ. They believe we got to follow in his footsteps. When you come into this teaching, okay, we teach you the truth. Okay? He said, one of the questions that was asked me, well, what do you think the Messiah came through, the Savior came through? Well, I'll die for your sins. You know, uh, heal you, all this stuff. Yeah, but what, what do you know about him? I mean, what did he came, what was his mission? You know, this leaves a big question mark on top of your head. 
So you go to Matthew 5 and 17, where he tells a whole group of people. Did you get that verse? You want Matthew 5 and 17 first? What about the other one I asked him? That first one? Yeah. Uh, Hebrews 9, and I'm going to start with that 16. Okay, she's going to go back to where it talks about the, the contract being enforced. Read. For where a covenant is, there must also be necessity be the death of that which ratifies. For covenant is made firm over the death of the victim. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all why that which ratifies is alive. Okay. So, he said he came to fulfill, alright? That's going to go along with this. Until a covenant could be enforced, there has to be the death of that which ratifies. Okay? Now, so the Messiah came in, he said he came to fulfill, and when John was out here baptizing, because all of Jerusalem, the Jews from all around were coming to Jordan to be baptized of, of John, to repentance. Well, you got to ask question, what are they repenting from? Well, you got to go back here, just like the Messiah says, uh, uh, um, go to... John 5 and 39. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, let's give that to the Messiah. Say what he's going to do. You know? Okay, John 5 39. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So the scriptures, the scriptures is the first five books of the Bible, in Genesis, Leviticus, uh, Genesis, Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, all those, numbers. and the numbers, and then from there, uh, Joshua. Joshua, all the way to Malachi, are the prophets. Okay. Those are the, the book of the testimony. So whatever the law said, they have to be confirmed by the prophets. Okay. So the Messiah came and said he to fulfill that. Well, at this point, he was with John fulfilling water baptism. Okay? Uh, pick it up over there in John where the side comes to him. Okay. Matthew 3, and I'll start at uh, 13. 3 13. Then cometh the Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him. Saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. So John, he didn't know what he had. He, just, he was sent to baptize. Okay? And here, Yahshua, you know, if you read into the word Yahshua, that's John's cousin. Read. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Why would he say that? Because the people, the Jews that came up to him would say, I, I confess, I couldn't keep the law. The law of Moses, okay? The old covenant. This thing here. We couldn't keep it. Okay, read. I have need to be baptized of thee. Because I have, then I have to be baptized of you. Because I was sent to baptize. You know, unto repentance. But since you come and confess no sin, I have to be baptized of you. Read. And come thou out of me. You and Yahshua answering said unto them. Read. Permitted to be so now, for thus becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Okay, he said, permitted to be so now, for thus becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. So there's the first mention of him fulfilling. He told John, you know, John said, well, I need to be baptized of you. I said, permitted to be so now, for thus becomes us to fulfill. Okay? Now, so here, this is where he begins and he fulfills water baptism. Okay? Well, we say, well, he says uh, the law of the prophets. Okay? Where is it in the law that he's, what he's fulfilling? You get Exodus. They okay, were at the Red Sea. Okay. Now, going back to the story here. Israel was held captive of Pharaoh in Egypt. 
there are all the taskmasters for making the uh, uh, treasure cities for Pharaoh. Okay? And they were making the blocks, the cement blocks, you know, that they're using to make these buildings.
For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the deities of Egypt. I will execute my judgment. I am Yahweh. Amen. And the blood shall be a, to you a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Okay, so he has Israel do all these things. The killing of the lamb, the gathering of the blood in the basin, the striking. You've got a spirit, he's striking. There's a reason why he's striking. You've got to strike the lentil and the two side posts, and different from the basin that's at the bottom. You got four points of blood. Okay? They have to be ready to leave. Yahweh's going to take them out of the land of Egypt. So if he, when he passes over that night where he don't see the blood in the inside of their houses, the firstborn, I think we're going to get to that, of that household is going to die whether it be man or beast. Read. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the deities of Egypt. I will execute my judgment. I am Yahweh. Okay. So, they uh, went ahead and, uh, and, and took the riches from Egypt, okay, uh, and they took all their animals and everything, and their, their kneading board strapped on their back, and they followed this cloud, which was a phenomenal cloud, which was a pillar of fire by night, and a pillar of cloud during the day. Okay? And wherever that cloud, cloud stopped, that's where they stopped. Whenever it took off, that's where they went. And they were never in the darkness, always in light. And they took a three day journey up to the Red Sea. Okay? Now, going back, Pharaoh called Moses and told him to get out of Egypt. Okay? Leave Egypt because the firstborn of his uh, offspring died. Okay? So Pharaoh was fed up after those ten plagues. But see, the thing you read about is Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart to do those things. Okay, so he made it to where he uh, let the Pharaoh feel anger against, you know, against them to get out of the land. And he said, "Let Yahweh bless me. Tell me Yahweh bless me too." And they left. And they spoiled the Egyptians. They took riches. They took valuables, and linen, and all this stuff out with them. And they took the three-day journey up to the Red Sea. And when they got there. Okay, the first thing they did was start murmuring against Moses. Because by then, Moses had, uh, Pharaoh had a change of heart. Okay, seeing the devastation that happened, he's got to go after the children of Israel. So he picked the best his chariots and, and men, and they went after Israel. Go ahead, read that. Yeah. Okay, Exodus 14, and I'll start at 8. They remember. See the darkness down here? Well, that's what Pharaoh was in. The Israelites were always in the light. Three. And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them in camping by the sea. And when Pharaoh drew near the children of Israel, he lifted up his eyes, and behold, Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. Okay. But when they get to this part here, they start murmuring against Moses. Mm -hmm. Oh, you brought us out here to die. You know, the Egyptians are coming, and we're here stuck between these two mountains and the Red Sea. You know? Let's get that. Okay, I'll start talking. Is not this the word that did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, for we may serve the Egyptians. For had it been better for us to serve the Egyptians, than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto them, unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see again no more forever. Thank you. 
separating them from the Egyptians and Pharaoh, okay, and the children of Israel are going through the Red Sea. Okay. Then I'll have pillar of a cloud of darkness unto Pharaoh. Read. And it was a cloud and a dark unto them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other at all at night. Kept separated. Read. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh caused the sea to go back by the strong east wind all that night, okay, and made kept, the sea... Kept them sanctified. All right. Okay, read. And the sea had dry ground, and the waters were divided, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left hand. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Okay, so you got how many? 550-something thousand children of Israel? Uh, is it the... Uh, 600. 600 and... Well, it says in there. 6,000. Fighting men. Okay, young men. Okay, not counting old women and old men and children. Okay. And they're all going through the Red Sea. It says Yahweh bore them with evil's wings. Okay. And Yahweh kept them separated. The children and the Pharaoh was coming in a hot pursuit. Three. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horse and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, Yahweh looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot wheels, and they drew them heavily. Can you imagine all of a sudden it starts getting light, and you realize where you're at? In the middle of a sea with the water all around you, you know, high tilling through there, and now you, you got to know you got to get out of there. But now we start taking the wheels off the chariots. Read. And that the Egyptians said, Let us flee unto to the face of Israel, for Yahweh fight for them against Egyptians. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand for the sea, that the waters may come against upon the Egyptians. By upon time, the chariots. By that time Israel was over on the other side already of the Red Sea. And Moses standing there. And Joshua's telling them, read. And upon the horsemen, and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians pleaded against it, and Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the hosts of the pharaohs that came unto the sea after them. There remaineth not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry ground in the land and in the midst of the sea, and the waters were and the waters of the wall there was wall unto them on the right hand and on the left hand. Then Yahweh saved Israel that day out of the land of Egypt. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel said that great work which Yahweh did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared Yahweh and believed Yahweh and served Moses. So it took that for, the, for Israel to, to see the greatness of Yahweh. Okay? That event there, you know, after they were complaining that their people were going to die out there, Yahweh saved them, brought them through into the wilderness. This woman is represented by the holy place, going by the tabernacle. Okay. So, we have the children of Israel being saved out of there by the hand of Moses and Joshua, okay. the son of Nun. Now, it came to the, when they gathered around Mount Sinai, and came to the land of Sinai, Yahweh was going to speak to them. Uh, they put up bounds around this mountain here because it was holy. Okay? They were not to touch or go beyond the, the boundaries or they'd be killed you know, by a, a spear.
spear or sword, either animal or man. Okay. Only Joshua and Moses went up into the snow. Okay. And then uh, Yahweh spoke to Moses okay, to tell the children to get cleaned up and all this. And you know, he was going to speak to them on the third day. And then uh, it came to pass, while well, everything was set up, that there was great thunderings, lightning, shaking, earthquakes, the sound of a trumpet getting louder and louder. Okay. And then Yahweh began to speak. Pick that up. Okay, um, Exodus 19 and uh, I'll start at 16. Exodus 19 and 16. And it came to pass on the third day of the morning that there were that there were lightning thunders and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mountain and the voice of the trumpets exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled and Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim and they stood at the foot of the mount and the mount of Sinai was altogether on smoke because Yahweh descended upon it in a fire and the smoke were ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole amount quaked greatly and when the voice of the trumpet sound long and waxed louder and louder Moses spoke and Elohim answered him by the voice and Yahweh came down upon Mount Sinai on top of the mount and Yahweh called Moses upon the top of the mount and Yahweh said to Moses go down change charge the people lest they break through unto Yahweh to give to gaze and many of them perish and let the priests also come near unto Yahweh sanctify thyself lest Yahweh break forth upon them and Moses said unto Yahweh the people cannot come up to the mount for thou charges a saying see bounds upon the mount and sanctify it and Yahweh said, Away unto him, Away, get thee down, thou shalt come up, thou Aaron and thee, but let not the priest and the people break through to come up unto Yahweh, lest he break forth unto them. Okay, uh, now get to the point where he starts speaking. The law, okay. his covenant, Twenty. the first covenant, the old covenant, read. And Elohim spoke unto these words, saying, I am Yahweh the Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven idols, or any graven or anything likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down unto them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay, now why would Yahweh say that? It goes all the way back. The people have been worshiping idols. Okay. All the way back, you go to Nimrod, where most of the stuff began. Okay, idol made. They worship the sacrifices to these carved images. Okay? They did the same thing down here in Egypt. There are many gods over here. And some of these people that are in the teaching, research, and saw that these plagues, these ten plagues, okay, accounted for these idols that they worship down here in Egypt. Okay? Frog, lion, whatever. The sun, almond rock. That's another thing. I'm in rock. I people, Christians go around saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. They don't know what Amen means. If they would do it, if they did, they wouldn't be saying it. Because that Amen is the first problem with Amin Ra, a sun god down here in Egypt. Instead of saying hallelujah or something like that, they're going to worship being something that the pharaohs from ancient times set up. All the way down to uh, Nimrod. Okay? Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So they were to build any great worship any graven image above the earth, below the earth, okay, and upon the earth. 
20 and 7. Thou shalt not take away the name of Yahweh the Elohim to bring it to naught. What? Read that again. Thou shalt not take away the name of Yahweh the Elohim to bring it to naught. To bring it to naught. Take away the name of Yahweh or Elohim and bring it to naught. For Yahweh will not hold them guiltless that taketh away his name to bring it to naught. Well, today, people want to argue blue in the face that his name is Jesus Christ. Is that the name of the God or Lord is his name, Jehovah, okay? God, if you're educated, you went to school, and if you were a dumbbell like me, you'd understand that God is a title, not a name. Lord is a title and not a name. Jehovah is erroneous because there's no J in the Hebrew. Okay? And don't they say this is the Hebrews God? God of the Hebrews? Yes. And when Yahweh spoke to them, he spoke to them in the Hebrew tongue. Okay? So you have to do your research to see where all this stuff comes from. That will get you proof. Okay? When you know the truth, it makes you stronger. And nothing can take it away from you. Okay. Read. Do we jump down to 18? Yeah. The people? Okay, uh, 20 and 18. And all the people saw the thundering and lightnings, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mouth smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou unto us, and we will hear. But let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Pray not, for Elohim is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me idols of silver, neither make any idols images of gold. An altar of the earth shall thou make unto me, and thou shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offering. Okay. Go down to the end where Moses writes the law in the book, okay, and he reverses it with the people of the children of Israel. Yahweh said to Moses, Lo, I come 
unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe forever. And Moses told the words of the, to the people of Yahweh. That's our angel to speak to them. Um, I was there when I read it. I was just catching up with verses. I mean, the numbers. Okay. I got a problem with numbers. Anyway, so Moses dedicates the, the book of the law, okay, and he was told to go out there, but to get the book, but before that, he called the children of Israel, sent the elders up into his mouth, okay, and Moses and Aaron uh, and, and Joshua were up there on the plateau, okay, pick that up. Okay, it's 21. Okay, I must start at age. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant shall I have made with thee, and with thee concerning all these words. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy elders of Israel. And they saw the elder of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a pay for from a sapphire and stone. And it, if it was, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. All right. Now, you say we go by the divine standard, right? Most holy place, holy place, for round about. There's nine principal vessels in this tabernacle. Beginning down here. In the outer court, okay, after you go to the gate, you have this brazen sacrificial altar with four horns on it. That the high priest had to take the blood of that sacrifice and place it on the four horns of the altar. After that, you have this brazen layer of water where the high priest washed and where they washed the sacrifices. They had a spigot at the bottom where they changed the water all the time. Okay? These were brass. And at the door, you had this brazen cup of fully anointing oil. Okay? That the high priest, when he was, was uh, 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 anointed to go into to serve in this, hall, in, in this tabernacle, they had to take this holy anointing oil and pour it on top of his head. It dripped down his beard all the way down to his feet. Both him and his sons. Okay, the high priest. Okay, let me read this real quick because you didn't let me finish reading this. Okay, 24 and 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basin, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that Yahweh has said will we do and be obedient. And he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which Yahweh has made with you concerning all these words. Okay. So that's where he sprinkled on the book. So that's where the dedication mm -hmm. of the first covenant of the children of Israel. Okay. And he gave a group of people. Okay. So as we go back to the tabernacle, we left off. We left off here with, uh, you're here on this plateau, and they see the Alhum of Israel, okay? And they described it as him being a body, a heaven of tyranny, the hands and feet, okay? And they did eat and drink. Now, in the holy place, we have three vessels here, but they're made of either uh, beaten gold, overlaid gold, solid gold. We have a seven branch uh, candle. Stick, we call it. It's a lampstand, seven branches. If they poured the oil in the, in the middle, and on both sides, it filled the other arms up. You have a table of showbread, overlaid gold, 12 loaves of bread, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. That was food for the high priest and the low priest. Here we have the golden overlaid uh, uh, altar of in, uh, incense, okay, which is intercession. Okay? They would put incense on this at the time of prayers or supplications 
and in that, that the incense would go into the most holy place, it be on the veils, and that the door, this is the first veil here, at the door, blue, purple, scarlet, they had these angelic figures embroidered inside and outside. Now the sixth step here, going into the most holy place, you have a veil, okay, which has embroidered angelic figures on it, inside and out. Okay. It was, was never opened. Okay. Uh, this morning, I guess I read a verse where it says that the way to the holy place was not yet known except the Hebrews. Okay. Anyway, oh, sorry about the light. Anyway, you have this threefold configuration here. The Ark of the Covenant overlaid with gold. Okay, it was, it's like a chest affair. And they had the seat with these two archangels on the top of it with their wings, barely touching in the middle, facing or looking towards the middle. Okay, or witnesses witnessing to the Shekinah, the Shekinah that flashed in the day of the Okay, now the chest affair. You had the table of stone with ten logs carved on it, Aaron's rod that budded, and a jar of manna, okay, that the Israelites were fed out here out in the wilderness, okay. You had ten principal vessels in this tabernacle, okay. They had more vessels than that, but just the ten the principal nine. ones. Nine. Oh, nine, excuse me. Ten would be the whole sanctuary. The whole thing. Okay. Now, when we look at this, we see this is us for around about here. This would be the holy place, most holy place. And uh, for a while, I was kind of, what is he eating and drink for? You know, they just see how they did, they did, how they did eat and drink. Wow. And they're in the holy place. What do we have? We have bread, right? So that tells me. They were eating here, they were here for a while, and they were eating while watching this vision here of Alabama. Okay? Okay? They look at it, you know. And then Joshua being the intercession, or Moses being the intercession between Yahweh and the children of Israel. Okay? And they were enlightened by this vision. See how that works by the pattern? Okay. Now, so that's the first covenant that was made with the children of Israel. And they all agreed we would do be obedient. You know, all the thunderings, they push Moses up there. And you speak to him because we'll die. Moses later on said, you know, I surely quake. Even Moses was scared, you know. Who wouldn't be? You know, just a little tremor we gave y'all. It's going to happen, you know, they're going to stop them, you know, but with the noise included with that, you know, anyway. So Moses was told to come up and to get this table of stone, which the Ten Commandment Law was written on, okay, so he could teach the children of Israel. Okay. Now, this is the second trip when Moses goes up here to receive this table of stones for this law, okay, for the first covenant. Now, I'm going to skip a lot of things. I don't know how much time we got left. Okay, just got around. Uh, got around 10 minutes. Let's go. Okay. You want to get to Jeremiah 31? Wait, wait. So Moses goes up here thinking that he's just going to get these tables stone and get on down because they left uh, the 70 hours in charge here. So that it says uh, if they have any business down here in the mouth. Aaron go down here and to straighten out whatever going whatever going on. So all these people out here in the mount saw Moses go up into the cloud, fiery cloud. That's why it's colored like like a fiery cloud, okay, representing eternity, okay, most holy place. It's like this cloud here in the tabernacle, okay. Now. Moses goes up here, Yahweh lays him down, and makes him unconscious. That's the same thing that happened to Dr. Kennedy when he received his divine panoramic vision and revelation. Because he, 
he speaks about this. Moses, the footsteps, you know. It's intriguing to, to, to read about it, okay. See how this starts, how it began, how he's showing Moses, okay, the cosmogony, you know, the beginnings of the creation. Okay. So he's up here six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Okay. Now he sees Adam and Eve. He sees the creation come in. See the little hearts here? As we represent spirit law. Spirit law bringing in the creation. Okay? Day by day, day by day. And then you have Adam and Eve in perfect peace in the garden here. Okay? And on the seventh day he rested. And then for the next 33 days, because he was up there for a total of 40 days and 40 nights, He's seen how to construct this tabernacle by divine specification, not by our knowledge or our wisdom. Or divine, you know, from Yahweh. Okay, nine principal vessels here, the coverings, the veils, every uh, detail. Okay, every little detail, how the high priest, what he has to do, and how to dress, and how to make the oil, and all that, the incense, the four ingredients for the incense, okay, all that. And then after that, Moses sees all this, and he comes down the mountain, because uh, uh, Joshua said he heard some noise in the camp down here. About the noise of war in the camp. Okay. So Moses turns his attention to go back, get the table stone, and he shows him right here on the plateau. The czar raised with the law. He said, what's Moses doing? Well, when Moses sees out here in Israel, Israel had built this golden calf. What was the first thing that God went to? Don't make any graven images of gold, silver, anything, worship anything above the earth, below the earth, you know, whatever. Can we read that in Exodus? Okay. Yeah. Exodus 32 and 19. And it came to pass as soon as he was nigh unto the camp. He saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses grew, anger grew hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. Okay. And this right here is a metaphor or it signifies the breaking of the first covenant when it's taken down the law. Okay. Because Moses got mad and he sees that Israel has broken the law. You know, they're actually one breaking the law. You're guilty of the others. Of the rest. Or all of it. Break one law, you break the all laws. Okay? So Yahweh or, or Moses made the children of Israel take this golden calf they built, okay, grind it up into powder, and throw it on the water. And all the children of Israel had to drink of that. Okay? Bitter water there. Okay? And later on, I'm skipping a bunch of things, but you can read it. Moses speaks up to uh, Yahweh saying, you know, blot my name out of the book that you've written, you know, because he was so ashamed of the children of Israel, what they did. And Yahweh said, whoever sins against me, his name I will blot. But what book are you talking about? See this book right here, the Alvin Foley? That's the book of life. And everybody's name in that is going to be born to a woman. Okay? Everybody's name. He says, Whoever sins against me, his name I'll blot out of there. Moses saw that in the vision. He understood. I'll take my name out of there. Okay. Yahweh said, No, I'll take whoever sins against me. No. And then he tells Moses to hew out his own table of stone and to bring them up to the mount 
and you'll write upon them the same thing that he wrote the first time. Okay? So after Moses tells the children of Israel, or those, uh, uh, those people that uh, are going to build the craftsmen, how to build everything that's going to go into this tabernacle, okay? how to dye uh, the colors of the curtains and the veils, and you know, how big it's supposed to be, how tall, how big these uh, uh, compartments are going to be, how big all these instruments, you know. After he got done with that, then he goes up into the mount the third time, okay, to retrieve the table of stone. So Yahweh has something to show Moses, okay. But once again, he lays Moses out, okay, shows him a rerun, and you can elaborate on this part here. Genesis, okay, and then when he gets back up up here, where he sees Adam and Eve here in the garden, but this time he sees this angel here, or the devil, deceiving the woman, okay, if he has snake up around the feet. Moses calls that a serpent, calls him a serpent because of his, of the way he goes to the woman, real uh, uh, sneaky and sly and all that, you know, deceiving her. What did Yahweh tell you? That you can eat of every tree, tree in the garden, but the tree of this you cannot eat of, you know? And that day you do, you'll become wise as him, knowing good and evil. And then the woman saw, you know, and so while she thought about it. Well, I'm going to take it, you know. And, most, and Adam's here watching this, watching her take this fruit and eats it. And Adam, you know, dies in his conscience. He looks, so what did this woman do? You know, because this woman was taken out of Adam. Okay. She's his bride. Okay. This is a representation of the children of Israel. Okay? Because all living came out of her. Every man, you know. And Adam, being the man for the husband, and for the love of the bride, she brought the fruit to him, and he ate it. And once he did that, they died instantaneously in their conscience. And Moses is looking at this, And then after that, he sees uh, Adam and Eve being expelled from the garden. Okay? Yahweh made them his coats of skin, placed a cherubim at the door with a sword of fire to reach everywhere. Okay? And now he has to eat the bread from the sweat of his brow. Okay? That's holy place. Four miles about. And you can line these up, okay, with the tabernacle, these events, okay. But anyway, getting back to, and then he shows the next thing, dealing with Noah. See, this is all the families coming out of Adam and Eve, okay. I skip, uh, you hear Cain and Abel, you read about them, what happened with them. Next thing you read about the flood and all that, okay. But this is according to the vision that Moses received. Okay? He was up there 40 days and 40 nights. That's why we have 40 plates. Okay? Because Dr. Kendall puts it down in the 40 plate chart. That's the third time that Moses came down from the mount. Okay? So now, all these years that the children of Israel were under this law, Failing and failing and failing year after year, thousand years, two thousand years. Here from the Messiah. Okay. Born of the law. Born of a woman. Okay. <coughs> now, his mission was fulfilled what was going down here. Remember, we started off with. He was getting water baptized by John at the River Jordan. Okay. 
Israelites, dead Israelites. Okay? So they couldn't keep this law. Hard on Israelites. Here you had children of Israel being baptized for the death of their life. Because they would have stood here, Pharaoh would have killed them. Okay? But they looked at Yahweh being salvation, or Yahshua, or Joshua, which brought them through the, the waters of the Red Sea to the other side. Okay? You see the principle? He's fulfilling Israel being baptized, just like he's out here with the children of Israel confessing their sins of John and the Jordan River. Okay? Then, keeps on going to do his, his uh, mission to fulfill. And then uh, the disciples are with him, watching him do all these events, healing the sick, raising the dead. Okay. Speaking things that they don't understand. What are you doing? I'm fulfilling. I'm fulfilling. Even until the time after his death, his burial, and resurrection, that the 12 disciples, the 11 disciples, knew that there had to be 12. So they decided to pick a 12 apostle. Okay? Later on, they realized that they didn't pick themselves as these disciples. Yahshua picked them. So, unbeknown to the to the 12, to the 11, here comes Saul. We just read in the scripture lesson of Paul speaking about those things. See, Paul was a Pharisee. Okay. Matter of fact, I think we got a picture of him here hold, holding the clothes of Stephen while he was being murdered out here. Okay. Having papers to go around putting these these uh these apostles to death for the believers. Okay, after to to death. They knew Paul, they knew Saul when he's up there. But Yahweh, he chose them. So he was on his way to get more papers on his, on his way, and uh, Yahweh knocked him off, Yahshua knocked him off his horse. Okay? And he speaks to him. Did you pick that up? And he tells them, why are you kicking against me? You know, well, well you know. Well, I saw, I saw, called himself a Pharisee of Pharisees, you know. He was staunch in law. Because the thing with Saul, okay, Saul was a unit, born that way. So he couldn't go into the temple like the rest of the Jews to learn. He learned that under the feet of Galileo, high priest, okay, which taught him the law, okay. Now, she can't find a verse with uh, somebody out there that was where uh, he was knocked off his horse and bright light shone around him and the people that went him saw a light too, you know. And then uh, he was blinded and he was told to go to Ananias, the high priest, to lift the scales off his eyes. But then, Yahshua revealed himself unto Saul. Made him an eyewitness. So he could preach the way he preached, like he was right there when he was doing the thing. And Yahshua was fulfilling. Okay? And when the rest of the apostles heard him speaking, they were astonished. This guy was out here killing us. And then they realized that Yahshua revealed himself unto him. Turned him around. Okay? So, uh, that's why Saul was speaking about. These carnal words, these laws, okay. Even the the, the, the the Gentiles, you know, they made their own laws for themselves because they saw the children of Israel doing these things. You know, no, no, let's do it too. You know, we'll make our own set of laws. You know, they, you know, Yahweh didn't tell them to do anything. Just the Jews, you know, Jews only, like members only, Jews only. Till this day. We have a plate. There it is. Called apostasy. Now, if he nailed his things to his cross, he brought in the new covenant, which is written in your heart and in your mind. Get the Jeremiah 39 if you get it. Get Jeremiah 31 31. 
This is in the prophets of Jeremiah. So we read in the law, but it's, but it's old covenant come in that we have to know about. So now we're going to learn about the new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come and say, Yahweh, for I will put a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, say Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts, and they will be, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Okay. So Christianity in the world has this image of Yahshua being on a cross. They still got him on the cross. He was taken down from that cross and put a Joseph in the tomb. Okay. And he rose the third day. They didn't put him back on the cross. Now we put him on the cross. Every time that we think we have to do something of this law, or we're saying we're breaking the law, we're calling Yahshua a liar to his face. Okay? And if you knew anything about this tabernacle pattern, you'll know what I'm saying by his to his face. Okay? Oh, I broke this law. I gotta go to church and pray. You call him Yahweh a liar to his face because he said he died for you. He died for your sins. Okay? But do you think you can do something better? Uh, I don't know if it's. This is like coming to the volume of the book that is written of me. Do I will Yahweh? Hebrews 9 something like that. Don't worry, I'm going to be taking medicine to help my brain, you know. I order some. temple plate here. Joshua, our sacrifice. Okay. Okay, Hebrews 10 and 7. 10 and 7. Then said I, lo, I come in in the volume of the book. It is written. What volume of the book? Law of prophets. Read. I delight to do thy will, Yahweh. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings. Even for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which offered by the law. Then said I, Lo, I come to do thy will, Yahweh. He taketh away the first, then he may establish the second. Establish the second. Take away the first, the first covenant, that we just read about, learned a little bit about. You can get into detail about each one of these laws. Okay? According to the pattern. And how he 
brought in a new covenant. Okay? That's written in our hearts and minds. We are saved by grace, not by doing works. This is out. Okay? This was never given to the Gentiles or the world. It was given to the Jews. Jews only. But we've been deceived by apostasy. Okay? By the churches out there. Restoring foreign ordinances. Doing all these Lord's suppers and stuff. You know? All these things. The Apostle Paul writes about these. What these, these things that they're doing. But we're on a path. Okay? We're on the way, the truth, and the life. We can't be swayed by these things on either side of us. Okay? As we take our journey, we see these things happening. But if you have the Holy Spirit in you, which is directing you, which is teaching you, that's Yahshua. Okay? Uh, I'll leave with that one verse that says, uh, Yahweh's going to send the comforter of my name. Uh, 40 something. John. John 40. This is what we have to rely on. We don't rely on a person to teach you or show you the things we should have learned when we were young. Our parents should have taught us between good and bad, living out in this world, how to get along. We don't need somebody who we have to pay to teach us how to do those things. Okay? John 14 and 26. Go ahead and read it. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay. So he's the comforter, okay, which will teach us all things, and bring all things back to our remembrance. Okay. Now, I want to apologize for starting late today. Like I said, first of all, my, my trick is my van, I'm going to start all that temporary to my pickup to bring it down here. I left a couple of things that didn't mean to do it. That's why I'm holding this microphone here. You know. Uh, and then we got a new camera. We're trying to get it going, but we needed some more things to, to the, uh, uh, stream. I couldn't get uh, Facebook to stream because I guess uh, Bill was using it on the other side page, so I, I went ahead and did it on my page. Hopefully uh, people saw it. Okay. Uh, another thing, uh, these books, let me see your book, I read. Or you can come up here and model it. You know, turn the page until I'm holding the mic. Okay, these books, this is one of the things that we're doing to help the brethren out there so they can have something or are you, are you, are you showing this thing here? Okay. That uh, we want the people, it's a nice learning tool. It's, a, it's an aid. Okay. We're not making any money off it. We just want you to have something you can have if you want to explain something to somebody, a friend or whatever, you can have your own class. Okay? You have the charts. Okay, the five, seven basic charts here. Okay. Then you have the four plate chart. And it's pretty they did a pretty good job printing these, I can say. You know, the 40 uh, 490 cycle. This one here. Uh, at the Daniel chart or the map chart. But if you see, you know, if you want one, give me a call. For seventy-seven dollars. I know that's kind of steep, but after this pandemic and everything, and uh, we had these things. The first one was made a few years ago price went up. They, they costed us $65, now $77. Okay. 
and uh, it's a great tool. Plus, we're making uh, the guys there, 